So let's talk about another very useful tool for uh, uh, cryptographic authentication. So this is going to uh, um, use now for uh, 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 symmetric key authentication. It's going to come back when we're going to talk about symmetric uh, public key authentication. Um, it's going to come back when we're going to talk about uh, uh, passwords. It's really one of, uh, um, it's, very, it's really a very popular and very useful uh, uh, cryptographic tool. So the tool we're going to talk about right now is cryptographic hash functions. So a hash function is a, a function which takes input of arbitrary length. So the, um, this notation here, 0, 1 to the star, means uh, strings of arbitrary length. So strings made of 0, 1s uh, of any length. And maps these large, potentially very large strings into strings of a fixed size k. Uh, so when we talk about cryptographic hash function, this k is typically something like 160 bits or 250 bits or something like that. Like that. So this is a hash function. And uh, maybe you've also encountered hash functions in uh, uh, other uh, courses in the context of, of uh, algorithms um, or data structures. Um, but we are, we're talking about cryptographic hash functions. And so, so let's see what are some of the properties of hash fun cryptographic hash functions, which are very important for us. So the very important, the, very, uh, uh, the first function that, uh, property that we want of cryptographic hash function is efficiency. So given some input x, computing h of x, let's call it y, should be very fast. So by fast, I mean as uh, comparable with symmetric key encryption, right? So this should be as fast as encrypting with the AES or doing something like that. The second property, and this is a security requirement, is that the, one way the, 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 the cryptographic hash functions should be one-way functions. So what does a one-way function mean? A one-way function is a function which is easy to compute, but it is hard to invert. So let's think about it for a second. Um, what does it mean that it's easy to compute and it's hard to invert? So it's easy to compute, meaning that if I give you x, then you can uh, uh, compute h of x and, and get y, and that's easy to do. Inverting the function should be hard, meaning that if I give you a y, which was uh, uh, computed as the uh, h of x for some random x, it should be really hard for you to find uh, uh, the pre-image. So the x, the x or another x such that h of, that, uh, of x is equal to y. So please think for a moment. Since the function is shrinking, since uh, 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 the function takes input, which might be very long, and maps them into outputs, which are very short, clearly, uh, uh, not only these uh, uh, pre-images always exist, but there are even plenty of them. For every string, for every output string, there are really, 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 really many input strings that map to the same one. Yet, it should be hard to find them. So these. Uh, um, uh, uh, uh. So this might also be uh, maybe a bit counterintuitive, because if you think about most of the functions that you might know from, uh, 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 from math, uh, uh, you know, things like addi addition or multiplication or things like that, more or less for every uh, uh, operation that you know, there is an inverse, right? I mean, if you add, there is subtraction. If you multiply, there is division and so on. So somehow, these cryptographic hash functions need to do something something very garbled inside the, the code, inside the, the specification of the function, uh, such that they take the input and the output should be somewhat uh, uh, looking unrelated to the input, such that given the output, it should be hard to go back to the input. Uh, and again, so this on, can only hold against computationally bounded adversaries, because of course, if you have unlimited computing power, you could just do a brute force attack. You could just try to every possible input until you find one that maps uh, uh, to the same output. So, so, so we're going to ask that inverting h is computationally hard. Not also that we are asking that inverting h on a random x is computationally hard, because uh, uh, you should not confuse cryptographic hash functions with an encryption scheme. So computing h of x is not a good encryption. So uh, why is that? Because uh, if if I know what the message is, or if I have a, uh, uh, um, if I have a guess at what the message might be then it's very easy for me to do brute force on the message. So suppose that you want to, uh, that you hash a message which is either yes or no, and you give me the output, and now you ask me to guess, was this, uh, 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 the, is this the hash of yes or is this the hash or no? Well, uh, of course I can find that. I can just hash back yes and no. Note that the hash function doesn't have any secret key. It's a public key. Uh, it, 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 it's not a secret key algorithm. It's just a 
a, a public function. So, so if you give me the output of it, I can hash yes, I can hash no, check which one it was, and then I can tell you, okay, the one you gave me is the hash of yes, or is the hash of no. So, so, so hashing doesn't necessarily hide the, 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 the input, but what is true is that if you hash a random value, then it's going to be hard for me to, to guess which one it was. So please remember this, uh, that, that's a very uh, uh, big difference. And this is going to play a big role, for instance, later on when we're going to talk about uh, password security, uh, among other things. Um, and in general, hash functions are not encryption schemes. Another property that we want from hash function is what is known as collision resistance. So collision resistance means that um, an adversary that sees the code of the function, an adversary that knows h, it knows the function h, should not be able to produce two values, x and x prime, such that h of x is equal to h of x prime. So it should be hard for an adversary to find two values that hash to the same uh, uh, output. Again, note that since the hash function maps very long strings into very short strings, um, these collisions not only exist, but there are many, many, many of them. For every value in the output set, there are so many values in the input set that map to the same value. But again, finding these collisions should be computationally hard. So, uh, uh, um, of course, someone who has an um, infinite amount of time can simply try to hash every possible value that there is and then find the collision. But if you have, if you're computationally bounded, uh, um, meaning that you have reasonable uh, uh, computing power, then finding such collision should be uh, uh, hard. Interesting, collision resistance implies one wayness, and there is an exercise about this. Another interesting property, uh, um, which is mostly talked about when we talk about attacks, this is not in the book, but I, I like to mention it anyway, is what is known as second primitive resistance, because you might encounter this term in, 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 in the wild. So second primitive resistance is somewhere between two and three, and says that given x, it should be hard to find an x prime such that h of x is equal to h of x prime. So this is somewhere in between because in, in collision resistance, the adversary is freely able to get to, to choose both x and x prime. Whereas in second primitive resistance, the adversary is given one of the x's, so that x is fixed. And then he has to find another x prime that hashes to the same value. So try to think about for a second for why uh, uh, which uh, uh, of these two security properties is stronger and which is uh, and which is uh, uh, weaker. Okay. So okay. So this is the definition of a cryptographic hash functions. But do we have uh, cryptographic hash functions? Yes, we do. Um, we have some example of some old cryptographic hash functions which are not secure anymore and should not be used, such as MD5 or SHA1, and those are insecure in the sense of collision resistance. They're insecure in the sense that uh, we have found collisions, we have found pairs of messages which, uh, which hash to the same value. Therefore, those cannot be used for application in which collisions resistance is important. Um, we have to remember that attacks only get better. So if these functions have been broken in the sense of collision resistance, they might get broken soon in the sense of second primitive resistance and or even one wayness. Um, whereas how, how likely this can be or not, uh, uh, um, we can discuss it over the coffee break. But uh, uh, in general, it's a bad idea to use MD5 or SHA1 for any application which uh, uh, is security related. Um, when I say it's broken, it doesn't mean that you can find collision on your laptop. It means that using a very large and significant amount of computing power and using some very sophisticated attacks, researchers have been able to find some collisions. The existence of the collision themselves means that these functions are not deprecated and should not be used. It doesn't mean that it's easy uh, uh, um, for anyone to compute uh, collisions. Um, in particular, SHA-1, uh, uh, it was very interesting when it was broken. It was broken by a team of uh, uh, Belgian researchers in collaboration with the Google uh, researchers. Um, and there is a website called Shattered uh, that you can go and visit where the attack is explained. And uh, uh, um, Essentially, you can download two PDF files. Uh, there are two, uh, uh, two PDF documents which are clearly different. You can look at them and they're different. And if you compute the digest uh, of the two, if you compute the hash of the two documents, you will get the same hash. 
Um, by playing with file formats, there is even a tool which allows you to compute your own uh, uh, um, uh, uh, PDF files which, have, uh, which uh, uh, make a collision. And this is due to the way that uh, 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 this exploits also some properties of uh, uh, file format encoding. Well, the fact that some of hash functions have been broken doesn't mean that you know, all hash functions are broken. Still, there are, uh, uh, we have good hash functions uh, uh, that are secure, that are believed to be secure, and uh, are used and are being used in, in applications, and those are the ones you should use. Those are functions like SHA-256 or SHA-3. Um, so maybe a few words about this. SHA-256 is a, a function which looks very similar to SHA-1, but uses larger outputs uh, uh, and more rounds, whereas SHA-3 is a function which is very different in its design. So the term SHA, the, the acronym SHA stands for Secure Hashing Algorithms. All these functions have been chosen by public competition uh, uh, by NIST in a similar way as what we discussed with the AES uh, uh, for encryptions. So, so these functions were proposed by uh, uh, researchers from all over the world. And then over a period of a few years, researchers have attacked each other's proposals. And at the end, some proposal won. Um, so, so SHA-256 and SHA-3 are examples of good hash functions that you can use for security uh, uh, critical purposes. So now that we have the definition of hash functions, let's look at how hash functions can be used or cannot be used for authentication. So hash functions, one of the common application of hash functions are common uh, uh, is to do integrity check. Integrity checks against random errors, not adversarial tampering. So you might have experienced that you go on a website and you download some large file for instance, some Linux distribution. And then next to the file on the website, it says, uh, it shows a, 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 a string, usually encoded in hexadecimal, of uh, a random looking string, which is called the digest of the file. So the idea of this is that uh, you download the file, but perhaps there is some error on the communication. There is some packet which doesn't get delivered, and the file is very large. Uh, uh, so if you want to verify that the file you downloaded is uh, um, the same that, that was on the website that you downloaded it from. Um, what you can do is that you can download the digest of the file from the website and then recompute the digest of the file on your own machine and check whether they are the, the same or not. So this is uh, shown here in the picture. So here you have uh, Alice who uh, sends this uh, message to Bob together with the digest of the message, the hash of the message to Bob. And then there is some error on the channel uh, uh, shown by this lightning. Therefore, Bob might get an um, M prime C prime, which might be different from the original message. So now Bob can recompute the hash and the, uh, and the, uh, uh, on the message and check whether this is the same as the, uh, uh, um, uh, and, and if not, uh, then you, Bob might conclude that something went wrong. Is this a secure authentication mechanism? No, it's not. Uh, why? Because if the uh, channel is not, performing random errors, as shown by the lightning, but is doing adversary, is introducing adversarial errors, then uh, a hash is completely useless for, uh, 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 for security, for authentication. So let's see how the attack will go. And the attack is very, very simple. So the adversary can simply change the message and the message to match the new message. So, so Ali sends the, the message M together with the hash C. The adversary simply drops both of these values and sends its own message M prime with its own uh, uh, hash C prime which then will reach uh, a Bob, who can then check that the Mac is equal to the, uh, 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 then the hash is equal to the uh, hash of the message received. And he will believe that everything is fine, even clearly it's not because the pirate here inter uh, 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 has, has sent its own message instead. So hash functions alone are not, cannot be used for authentication. So let's try about how we could fix this. So a way of fixing this is to add some secret on Ali's side and on Bob's side that the adversary doesn't know, and then compute the hash of the message together with the secret key. Now, since adversary doesn't know this secret key, the adversary is not able to produce a hash which will be accepted by Bob. And this is essentially this, the, the essence of uh, uh, HMAC or Message authentication schemes which are built from hashing uh, uh, functions. So let's go through these once again. So if you have a hash function, a secure hash function like uh, a SHA-256 or SHA-3, and you use it together with a secret key, then you can construct a secure MAC scheme. Here is how the construction goes. Alice and Bob have shared some key K. 
uh, the keys shared in some way, which is uh, uh, we're going to discuss in, in, in later uh, uh, videos. When Alice wants to send a message M, she sends the message together with the Mac. How does she compute the Mac? She computes the hash of the message together with the secret key. When Bob receives a message together with the Mac, he's going to recompute the uh, uh, hash of the message and the key and check whether this is the same as the Mac he received. Crucially, the key is never sent uh, over the channel. The key is only stored at Alice and Bob's side. So when the adversary here receives uh, the message in the Mac, uh, if he wants to modify this, the message is going to be easy to modify the message, of course. If he wants to modify the Mac, it's going to be easy, of course, to modify the Mac. But it's going to be very hard for him to compute a Mac which uh, uh, matches this new message. And this is because this hash functions also was using this secret. And therefore, the output here uh, is somewhat uh, uh, random guessing this may could should be hard or uh, for, for 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 the adversary so hmac is not uh, uh, just this there isn't only one layer of hashing there are two layers of hashing um, for technical reasons which are outside of the scope of this course uh, but the main intuition is that if you hash a message together with a key this is almost a secure mac schemes uh, mac scheme and then for for technical reasons you might have to do something more Um, finally, let me say something about obtaining confidentiality plus authenticity. In most practical applications, you want to do both, you want to achieve both confidentiality and authenticity. Um, why? Because you want to get uh, to, uh, uh, from a stage in which you have a completely insecure channel, you're communicating over a completely insecure channel, where the adversary can both tamper with the messages and eavesdrop the messages. Uh, and you want to bring this to a setting which is a completely secure channel where the adversary cannot tamper with the messages and cannot read the communication. So to do this, you need to do both confident, you need to use both confidentiality mechanisms, encryption, and authenticity mechanisms, MAC. And in most applications, both of these properties are required at the same time. So now we have learned in, in the previous videos, we have learned about uh, encryption in these videos we have learned about max so now you could go home and 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 you know and if you want both confidentiality and authenticity you could put the two things together but if you think about it there are different ways of you can do this right you could um encrypt and then in parallel compute the mac so you have a message and then you do uh, uh you encrypt the message you compute the mac on the message and you send both of them or you could do encrypt then mac so you could encrypt the message and then Mac the ciphertext. Um, or you could do the Mac on the message and then encrypt the message with the Mac. So you could do many, many different things. Um, and which one of these works and which one doesn't work? Um, so in some of the exercises, you should think about which of these combinations work and which of these combinations don't work and why. Um, but what I want to, uh, uh, the point I want to make with this slide is that uh, it's easy to get wrong. So in a lot of applications in which uh, 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 developers, engineers have uh, uh, combined encryption schemes and MAC schemes, um, this, uh, something went wrong and then the, 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 the systems were shown to be insecure and were broken uh, using so somewhat sophisticated attacks. So the, suit pro the Internet Suite Protocol uh, SSL is a very good example of this, and we're going to see some of these examples uh, later on. So, so what do you make? What do you encrypt? Uh, um, you need to use different keys. There are many things which, are, uh, uh, um, which you would have to choose yourself. So instead of, of having to do this yourself, if, you have, if this is your problem, if you ever get into the situation in which you have to get both confidentiality and authenticity at the same time, uh, don't make your own crypto don't cook your own crypto use authenticated encryption so authenticated encryption are modes of operation for uh, uh, block ciphers um, so in a similar way as you know cbc uh, uh, encryption was or countermeasure was uh, which at the same time guarantee confidentiality and authenticity examples of authenticated encryption schemes uh, uh, are ocb or gcm but probably one of the easiest one it's ccm which is simply counter mode uh, uh, encryption together with CBC Mac. 
And this is something that, of course, you could also have done yourself, but this is done in the right way. So, so if you have a need to write an application in which you need both confidentiality and authenticity, don't combine max and encryption in your own way. Use an authenticated encryption scheme. Someone else has solved the problem for you. Before concluding, uh, uh, I want to talk about the definition of public key authentication, also known as signature schemes, and explain the main differences between MAC schemes and signature schemes. And then we're going to see examples of public key authentication or signature schemes uh, in the next videos. So a public key authentication scheme um, has a similar structure to a MAC scheme, but also very different. The main difference is in the key generation algorithm. So the key generation algorithm now outputs a public key and a secret key, similar to what we did in public key encryption, where the secret key, of course, as the name says, should be secret, and that's why it's in a red bubble, whereas the public key is public and can be seen by anyone. Using the secret key and the message, you can compute uh, 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 some function of the message using the secret key. And in this case, we don't call it a MAC, we call it a signature. And therefore, this is the signature algorithm, and S is the signature on M. And the reason why we call them signature, it's as we'll see in a moment, is that these are the analogous of physical signatures. So you know, when you take a document and you sign it with your with your handwriting. The verification algorithm, similar to what we did for Mac schemes, takes as input the key, the message, and the uh, signature, and then output zero or one. Uh, uh, zero, one if, if this is the valid signature on this message with this public key, or zero otherwise. So note already that from the definition of the, uh, uh, um, of the uh, algorithm, the public key is public. So anyone on the planet can run uh, uh, the verification uh, uh, algorithm, which means that you can sign a message. If you have the secret key, you can sign a message, and you can put it on your website or on the web or on the blockchain. And then anyone who knows that your public key can verify this signature uh, 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 on this message. Instead, with a MAC scheme, uh, uh, you would have that the sender and the receiver were sharing uh, um, a key with each other. So let's talk about the uh, definition of security for public key uh, 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 authentication schemes. So this looks very similar to the definition of authenticity for uh, a symmetric key and, uh, authentication schemes, so for the MAC schemes, with, of course, with the difference that the box uh, uh, we still have the adversary, we still have the box, we still have the adversary was to produce a forgery, M0 and S0, and the forgery will be valid, and we say that the adversary wins if the forgery is valid, so if the, if, if, if the signature and the message that the adversary has output uh, is accepted under the public key, and if the message is different than any other message that the adversary has queried before, so the adversary can still query the, the, the box and get some signatures on these messages. Note that the definition is a bit shorter. We don't need the verification queries because the adversary knows the public key, so the adversary can, on, on his own at home, can compute. Uh, 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 if he wants, if he has a guess at the signature for a message, he can just check it with the public key. The public key is given in the first step, so he can check whether this this uh, 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 signature is valid or not. So there is no need to give access to a verification oracle. And again, we say that the scheme is secure if no computationally bounded adversary can win this game. Um, with any uh, with a high probability. So let's now talk about the main difference between secret key and public key authentication. So secret key, uh, 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 like we did for encryption, uh, see the problem with secret key encryption was that the sender and the receiver needed to agree on the same key. Public key encryption solved the problem by saying that oh now I have a public key and I can send it. Uh, uh, um, I can generate my public key, I can publish it, I can send it to anyone else, who can then use this public key to encrypt messages for me. So similarly here, we have that uh, MAC schemes, secret key authentication schemes, have the limitation that Alice and Bob send and the receiver, they need to both agree on this key K. Whereas in, uh, um, in public key authentication, the sender can have uh, uh, generate his own, her own public key pair, public key and secret key, then publish a public key, send a public key to Bob, and then uh, uh, send a message together with the signature to Bob. So Alice and Bob do not need to share the key uh, uh, in the first slide. Um, public key cryptography does not solve everything. 
we had this exact same slide in the uh, setting of uh, 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 public encryption. So also in this case, uh, uh, um, you still need to make sure that you receive the public key. If you want to verify that some messages come from someone, you need to make sure that you have their own the public key. You need to make sure if you want to make sure that the message comes from me. If I, if you see a signature that someone that pretends to be me, uh, uh, you need to be sure. If you want to verify it, you need to be sure to get my public key and not the public key of the adversary. So this is uh, uh, again the attack. So if if uh, um, Let's suppose that Alice produces a public key and a secret key, sends a public key to Bob, but the adversary is uh, observing the channel and therefore the adversary drops this public key and sends instead his own public key to Bob. Now when Alice sends the message and the signature to the adversary, the adversary simply ignores that and sends to the adversary his own message and his own uh, 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 secret key pretending to be, and, and his own signature pretending to be Alice. And poor Bob here has no way of knowing whether these matches come from Alice or the adversary. Here the adversary can pretend to be Alice because Bob doesn't have the public key of Alice to start with. So the way we're going to solve this problem is using key management, which we'll see in a couple of weeks. And now for the main difference between secret key and public key authentication, which is why we call one thing max and we call the other thing signatures, is that uh, uh, signatures have two very important properties. So signatures are transferable and signatures are non-repeatable. What does it mean? It means that if I send you a signature on a message, you can then persuade someone else that I've actually sent you this message. Suppose that I send you a message, uh, a signed message that says, uh, uh, please pay 100 krona to you. Uh, you know, please pay 100 krona to Bob. Then you please pay 100 krona from Claudio to Bob. Then you can go to the bank and deposit this and say, hey, look, Claudio said that you can give me 100 krona. Please give me 100 krona. So you can transfer the message to a third party. Um, and it's not reputable in the sense that after I sign a message, I can't uh, uh, then go to the bank and say, no, it wasn't me. The bank knows that I'm the only one that has my secret key. And therefore, uh, 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 if they see a message which was signed by me, they, they know that I really did it. I can't uh, 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 pretend that I didn't do it. So this is what we can see here on the uh, uh, right side on the slide. So in signatures, only the signer knows the secret key. So there is this asymmetry. Alice here knows the secret key, whereas Bob knows the public key. Versi also knows the public key. So if uh, Alice sends the message together with the signature to someone, like, uh, uh, um, like the pirate, now the pirate can send the same message and the same signature to Bob, we will accept. But if the message, if the adversary changes the message and the signature, then Bob will reject. Because adversary doesn't have the secret key, cannot compute the same signature. Um, can we use Mac schemes for signatures? Can I send you a Mac that then you can send to someone else and say, "Hey, you know, I send you, I, I send, I, I, I write a message. Please uh, uh, pay 100 krona from Claudio to Bob. I compute a Mac on it. I give it to you. Then you go to the bank and you tell to the bank, "Hey, please, look, Claudio said he wants to give me 100 krona. Please pay 100 krona to me." So you cannot do that. Why is that the case? So suppose that we set up the system in such a way that everyone, I mean, uh, if the bank has to verify the key, they must also have the same key, right? So in this setting, Al is the sender, uh, uh, the, the man in the middle here, uh, and, the, and the final receiver, they all have the same key, K. So when you send, uh, 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 you know, if, if you as the receiver get a message together with a Mac, which verifies, and, and, and you hear the pirate says, hey, look, this message came from Alice. Uh, uh, Bob has no way of knowing that this message really came from Alice. This message might have well has been computed by the pirate. Why? Because both pirate and Alice know the key K. So if everyone knows the same key, then everyone can compute this Mac. There is no way of distinguishing between people. Said it in other words, in cryptography, you are your secret key. So if two people know the same keys, they are the same uh, uh, person. Um, in cryptography, you are the things you know. So uh, uh, you know, if, you, if you know the same secret as someone else, you are them. If you know my password, you are me. There is very little that can be done about this. But if you know my, if, if three people, they all know the key, there is no way of distinguishing uh, uh, which of these parties send the message. So here, if Bob receives a Mac, a valid Mac on some message, he will know for sure that this message comes either from Alice or from the pirate, but he has no way of knowing 
which one of these two parties the message comes from. Whereas in the signature scheme, in the public set, in the public key setting, if Bob gets a valid signature on this message, he knows that this message must come from Alice because she's the only one with the secret key. 